Oh, man. Umpires need to chill out. In the Yankees-Orioles game, an umpire tossed the grounds crew who was waiting behind the tarp. He didn't want him there, I guess. He was like, hey, guys, get lost. And they did. <laughs> this is interesting to see your daily sports podcast about news, narratives, takes, and gambling. I'm Nick, your dashing host, et cetera, et cetera. It's Thursday, the greatest night of the week to go out and have a couple of brewskis with your boys or with your girls or do whatever you want to do. Thursday Night Football, we have one college game tonight, and we have a lot of cool stuff to talk about. I don't know why I took my glasses off. I've got to put them back on because we have some reading to do. We're going to get into our Thursday Night Football preview. We're also just going to take a quick look at some of the college stuff going on. Uh, but first, let's address this James Franklin to USC situation. So quick uh, history of US or Penn State coaches. They had Joe Paterno for a million years, and then they had Bill O'Brien, and then they had James Franklin. Penn State people are unaware of what it's like to be searching for a coach every other year. And I can tell you, it is really not that cool. It actually sucks a lot. It's not that much fun to look for coaches all the time. They love Bill O'Brien at Penn State. They love him, who is now the Bill O'Brien, the general manager of the Houston Texans, got Bill O'Brien, the head coach of the Houston Texans, fired. So now he's the offensive coordinator at Alabama, obviously, <laughs> And they, they love him the most because he was the guy that wanted them after all of the Jerry Sandusky stuff went down. They love him essentially equally to the way they love Joe Paterno. And if you think I'm joking, look into it. James Franklin revives them. James Franklin played in eastern Pennsylvania. He's got a lot of Philly ties. He's a perfect hire for them. Things are going well. Hey, why don't a lot of Penn State people love James Franklin? Well, there is an obvious reason. But there are also... You know, Penn State considers themselves a downhill defensive football team, and James Franklin brought the spread. And it, 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 But then they won. They won a lot of games with running backs and linebackers. So whatever. James Franklin, if he wants the USC job, the USC job is a great job. It is one of the greatest jobs It is in terms of like what you think about traditional college football. I have pointed out in the past that because of name, image, and likeness, the idea that college kids are going to be as famous as Reggie Bush and Matt Leiner were, that's over. However, the Pac-12, for the most part, is a joke. There are a lot of big schools that have had their, their moment in the sun historically, but they suck now. If you can lock down Southern California, you're going to win a national championship. I don't care if that's USC. I don't care if that is Virginia Tech. If you get the top seven guys from Southern California every year and then 20 of the other top 200 from Southern California, you're going to win a national championship, period. So if he wants to go to USC, I think so. I mean, you should always leave when it's too early, not too late. Penn State, five and six last year, had a... Bit of a rebuilding year, best player held out, second best player held out, then came back, or they held out, they, they opted out, excuse me. This report that there's mutual interest from James Franklin and USC comes from Dan Patrick. So let's just like run down Dan Patrick, who used to be one of the greatest people in sports, and now is just, I don't know, kind of like an old Joe Rogan of sports, I guess. This is other things. Here are some other things that uh, he reported. He reported that Michigan, Michigan State, Illinois, and Northwestern, Maryland, and Rutgers would not play football in 2020 if the Big Ten had a season due to COVID-19. Uh, that was a lie. They all totally did. He also started the rumor or reported the rumor that Tennessee recruits were A, handled McDonald's bags full of cash, and B, that Jason Witten was their favorite to become the next head coach. There has never been a corroboration of the McDonald's bags full of cash thing, and uh, Jason Witten nor anyone else has ever thought that there was even an interview. None of that has ever happened. So uh, do I think that Dan Patrick's full of crap? No, I think every single coach in the country has mutual interest with USC in terms of at least thinking about it. We, all, we were all there in the early 2000s. They were insane. It was awesome. It was so much fun for them. Like, why would you not think about it? Of course. And as the Alabama offensive coordinator, Bill O'Brien would have a job at Penn State for at least 10 years if he wanted it. All right, let's move on to some other stuff. Uh, the NFL is not the king of television. It is the god of television. The Associated Press reporting that the opening week averages for the NFL were the second highest TV ratings for week one over the past five seasons. They averaged 17.4 million viewers in the window. That means scattered throughout all of the games. That's a 7% increase during the COVID year. Um, people panic during presidential elections and they want to watch campaign stuff, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, also, it's just not as cool without, you know, the, the fans and, and, and whatnot. So pretty, pretty big increase there from week one. The most watched game of the week was Thursday night football. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers 
the Dallas Cowboys. It averaged 26 million viewers on digital. That's, this is, so this is all platform reporting. This is broadcast as well as streaming. The television deal that the, the NFL signs, it kicks off in 2023, so nobody knows exactly how it's going to work with streaming. Amazon's still kicking around buying Thursday Night Football. Um, the double headers, they averaged like 17 million viewers. It, it was really, really, really good work from the NFL in terms of making an ass ton of money. However, the Peyton Manning, Eli Manning thing, all of the beat reporters on the internet loved it. Nobody watched it, <laughs> which makes sense. It's Twitch. They're Twitch streaming games. I want Amazon to buy Thursday Night Football so I can Twitch stream a game and I can call the game and I can talk with my friends and people can give me money and I can give them rewards. And we, It's Twitch. They were not in the same room. They Zoomed. They put windows next to each other. They had their friends on. It was a Twitch stream and it was on ESPN2 and they're going to grade it compared to how things work on, on ESPN2. Duh. It's not as good. People want to watch football. They're not going to turn on their TV to watch Twitch. It needs to be on Twitch. It needs to be on whatever competitors Twitch has, which are none. 800,000 people watched it. That's a .06 rating. In contrast, the primary lead of ESPN Monday Night Football got a six-point rating, which is like almost 15 to 20 million viewers, depending on what time. Yeah, 800,000 people watching on Twitch would be the record, I think. I think right now the record is held by Dan Big Cat Katz, who is playing college football NCAA 2014. I think it was like, like 200,000 or something. I don't know. Everybody thought that it was going to be better than the Monday Night Football thing. No, dude. I only watched it for like 10 minutes and had, it was fine, but I don't care. I wanted to watch Monday Night Football because I'm a purist, but there are plenty of games where I would rather watch the Twitch stream depending on who's there and how candid they're being and whatnot. Like, that would be great. And you could pull up Wikipedia and be like, oh, where did he go to school? Like, that would be awesome. That would be such a fun football experience if you weren't that invested in the teams. I would be really into that. I would watch that during college football. I would, you know, I plan to Twitch stream during college football. If they could figure out this rights situation, but I sure hope that people don't judge the success of this based on the number. That would be asinine. The fact that 800,000 people watch it to me is remarkable. Of course, it's the same thing, and I don't want to hear anything from any old people. Like, how could you watch someone play video games? How could you watch someone else watch football? Mm-hmm. Checkmate. All right, we're moving on. We are moving on. A story I'm going to deep dive on this Sunday in my first NFL preview Sunday morning. The St. Louis Rams moved to Los Angeles, as we all know now, and it appears as if they may have committed uh, uh, widespread fraud and collusion to do that. It doesn't sound like they gave the city of St. Louis or any other investors a chance to build a stadium or to stay in St. Louis. Um, so there, there's been a lawsuit. I don't understand who exactly who's suing who, but I do that the lawsuit has been going on for some time. Um, so recently, the last attempt to get the lawsuit dismissed, failed recently. Uh, this is from, from Pro Football Talk. The NFL and the Rams have failed their last-ditch effort to avoid a jury trial in Missouri over the relocation of the team to Los Angeles. That means Jerry Jones, Roger Goodell, Robert Kraft, all these guys, Stan Kroenke, who owns the team, if there's a jury trial, they're going to be on the stand. In the city of St. Louis. So they tried to get it moved out of St. Louis, obviously, because the fans, they're going to be there. It's, it's <laughs> this trial. If they don't settle and essentially write the city of St. Louis, and I, Mike Florio reported this, and I'm going to say it. I, I don't know if it's true or not. If they don't write a billion-dollar check, this is going to trial during the playoffs. And you, those guys have to show up in court, or they'll go to jail. If you're subpoenaed and you're capable of going... They can hold you in contempt and you can go to jail. They're going to be on the stand and they're going to have to, under oath, talk about the dirty laundry in the NFL, for which they are all recorded in various things, lying about. They can say, oh, well, this, and we're going to do this, and this bit, and that bit. And then you're going to be on the stand in the city of St. Louis who loves its football teams. Yikes. At this point in time, you lost the trial. Or you didn't lose the trial. You lost the proceedings. This... You cannot go to trial if you're them. And if you're me, oh my God, please go to trial. Holy shit. I would love to see a trial. Like I cannot describe to, could you think about Jerry Drones on the stand in St. Louis looking at a jury of Rams fans as like they prove that Jones and Kraft and the Ford family and all of these people colluded to get an NFL team 
in Los Angeles so they can build their new headquarters. Like it was, it was clearly fraud. I mean, sometimes it's exactly what it looks like in life. They wanted a team in LA. The Chargers would have made more sense, but the Rams were like, yeah, we'll do that. We'll go back. Oh my God. And so that was it. No one's talking about this right now. So we'll do a deep dive on Sunday, but this is a massive story. I suspect very strongly they're going to eat their medicine, but these NFL billionaires have been cocky in the past. It cost them some $20 million with Colin Kaepernick, but this is a bigger paycheck. They're, it's going to cost them a team, essentially. That is an, a mind-blowing development. I wasn't even paying attention. I didn't know there was a lawsuit, and I pay attention to this kind of stuff. All right, let's move on to some Thursday night football. Before we do that, uh, the best defensive player on the Dallas Cowboys, probably Demarcus Lawrence, defensive end. He led the league in sacks a little while ago. He makes a million trillion dollars. He is out for a while. He broke his foot or his toe, or something. I don't know, but he's out. Uh, Thursday night football. The Washington football team playing the New York football Giants. Yeah, I'm not going to stop. My football, 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 it's back, y'all. It is back. So let's look into some injury report situation. So it's New York heading down south to FedEx Field in Maryland or wherever it is to play Washington. From an injury standpoint, got some interesting news. Evan Ingram, the tight end for the New York Giants, he's not going to play. Ryan Fitzpatrick, the quarterback for the Washington football team, he's not going to play. That leaves Tyler Heineke in for the football team. The football team has yet to beat the Joe Judge New York Giants, which seems fascinating to me. I think the Joe Judge is going to be fired in a matter of weeks. I'm going to guess like six to ten weeks he'll be fired. He's got a lot of Matt Patricia vibes on him, which uh, is not something that's a compliment, as one could imagine. The Washington football team favored by more than a field goal, minus three and a half. The over-under is 40 points. I think that is about accurate. This is going to be a very boring game. Very ugly, ugly, boring game. I, Tyler Heineke has wheels. He really put up a lot of, like a very, I can't say this. I, he had a lot of gumption last year against the eventual Super Bowl champions, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And he looked good. He's, he's probably one of the better backups in the NFL, but he's starting a, a game against probably the best backup in the NFL, Daniel Jones, who has more fumbles lost than games played. He has fumbled more and lost the ball than he has played NFL football games. That is atrocious. I think the Giants are going to lose just because, hey, I don't think they're very good, and I think that there's about to be a revolt. I don't think they love their coach. I think Washington football team loves their coach. They have Chase Young, Sweat, the Jonathan Allen guy. Their defense is nasty. They have better playmakers. They're better in every way except their offensive line is trash, and their quarterback is also trash. But they have gumption. They're home. It's going to be a crowd. They, they lost a game, a really close game to a really good team in their opener against the Chargers. NCAA college football Week three, huge game this week. It's the best game of the year so far when the Auburn Tigers go up north, play the Penn State Nittany Lions. First of all, don't say the SEC teams don't play true road games. They clearly do. The only one that doesn't is Alabama. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Auburn, for me, and I don't care what anybody says, stats are stupid. They have the best defense in college football every year. It's one of the weirdest things. They just recruit better. They recruit fast guys who cover. They recruit. It, and I, I, I'm like, people, scouts are so stupid. They, this makes me so, go scout the helmet, scout the player. Uh, there's a weird thing. Some schools are just better at some stuff than others. That's culture. It has to do with coaches that stay in the program over a long period of time and the recruiting holes and what's taught in local high schools and what's taught in the conference. Like There are other factors at play. Auburn's corners can cover better than almost every other corners as a team. They're so good. Their linebackers can cover. Their linebackers can hit. Their defensive line is huge. Their defensive line is fast. I don't know what the hell it is. I don't understand. Their defense is absolutely filthy, always. They did by far the best job against LSU, which was the best offense in the history of college football. Then the next year against the other best offense in the history of college football, they did the best. They are a fascinating team. So for Penn State, who prides itself on D-lines and linebackers, this game is going to be offenses that try to run this weird, tricky stuff against defenses who are just going to tee off. It's going to be a whiteout game. Kickoff is probably 737, even though Google says it's 730, which is so annoying. But 
I'm actually really excited for this. This is going to be just, this is one of those games where you think like, who cares how the outcome of the season goes? People who watch it and go to it, I suspect are going to remember it for a long time. I like Penn State. I actually don't know what the line is in that game. I don't really care. We'll talk about it tomorrow, I guess, but it's going to be fun. This is one of those college football games. You're like, this is college football. This is a two blue blood programs that have history, that have dudes that are famous, that have dudes in the NFL, Heisman trophies and, and all that. Well, I don't think Penn State does, but incredible game. I'm super excited about it. Set your, set your clocks. It's going to be, this is the game of the year. This is the non-conference game of the year. Every year there's one. It was not Oregon, Ohio State, even though that might have been in terms of X's and O's football, the game of the year. This is the one we are like, oh yeah, you remember when Auburn played Penn State? I suspect this is going to be. This is going to be that game. As for tonight, I have money on the Giants because I got a good price at Giants plus four. So all they have to do is lose by less than four. And I don't know that either team is going to score enough for Washington to win by more than four. We'll be back in better than ever tomorrow morning preview this weekend's NFL slate, wrapping up Thursday night football and anything else that comes to mind. Like, rate, review, subscribe, tell your boss, tell your friends, tell your family, etc., etc. 